Hey everyone, it's Jason, and welcome to another G.I. Joe deck building game. This is New Alliances, a Transformer crossover expansion. If you're familiar with the long history of um, G.I. Joe's and Transformers, they've had several different crossovers uh, throughout the years. This is kind of cool, we get these added into the game. I love the uh, little foil on here. Um, yeah, this is going to play like a regular, more or less like a regular deck building game. Um, you're gonna get new Joes to play as, new vehicles, utility cards, all that stuff. Um, but then the Transformers get added in, in a very unique mechanic, um, as well as, um, their own actual gameplay stuff. So yeah, we'll go ahead and I'm gonna hop through the rule book a little bit. I'm not gonna go over every single little aspect of it, but we are gonna look at some of the stuff. So you have a story pack, the Bridge to Doomsday, so we'll have our brand new story for this. Um... I think is actually listed as mission number seven. So like each game comes out, there's been a new mission. This is mission number seven for the overall story. Um, we'll get some extra components. We'll look at those in just a minute. Um, so the base game gets set up the main way. You have your main deck leaders. We have some of them swap out your stuff. Um, however you'd like to do it, get some different things. Uh, just keeping your cards roughly the same cost. Um, and then we have the Ark. So you're going to place the Ark near the lineup and reach with all players. Place the Teletran and Repair Bay tiles in their matching slots to the Ark with offline damage side up. Add two Energon dice to the dice pool by placing them directly onto the Ark, the remaining six dice next to the Ark. Then place Bumblebee Autobot card in the Ark slot designated for Autobots. So it'll look like this. So let's take a quick look at what those are. So, first of all, we have the Ark here. So, there's a new little map that goes on here. We have the Energon Pool, we have the Repair Bay, and the Teletran 1. So, Autobots, max 5 here. If full, discard 1 before adding. So, this is going to work like um, the hangar for the Joe's vehicles. The Autobots go hang out at the Ark, um, and then you can basically pay costs to use them. And we'll get more of them attached to them in just a minute. Um, which says, each time you put an Autobot into the Ark, add one Energon to the pool. So we'll only reduce the cost for two Autobots by one for each Autobot in the Ark. And end of round, add one Energon to the pool, max of three for each Autobot in the Ark. Um, so yeah, you're going to get a special pool of Energon dice. It could be these pink dice here. Um, which, I grabbed one of the regular ones. So... They have the exact same size as a Joe die. So there's no difference in rolling. They don't do anything special. They're just pink because they're separate because they use certain cards use those costs. Um, so then various things are going to have you pay for them using Energon, most of the Transformer stuff. Um, and you have them on here. So as you add new Autobots in here, so when you play an Autobot, you can remove them. When you add a new one, you get to refill it. Otherwise, you got to add extras every turn for having Autobots in here. Um... And then we have the two extra little sides. We have Teletran 1 and the Repair repair Bay. So they start in the offline side, um, which have different things to do. So the Teletran 1 says, if there's ever 6 plus uh, Energon dice in the pool, bring Teletran 1 online by flipping this card. And for the Repair Bay, it has the Recruit All, so everyone can help on the team can pay for this. 6 to... I'll put this tile to operational. So everyone on the team, uh, all the different players can help pay for that. And then what do they do? The repair base says, at the start of your turn, you may discard one card to move one Autobot from your discard pile to the Ark. Um, so this is why you use one that you played earlier. Get him back quicker than waiting until you draw him again. Um, and then Teletrain 1 says, if an Autobot is on a mission, it gets plus two recon or plus two tracking um, rolling the green dice. So they really just boost up your um, dice point. If there's zero energy in the pool, take Teletran 1 offline by flipping this card. So your pair bay has something has to happen to destroy it again. But tele Teletran 1, as long as you have Energon, it stays on operational. But once you spend it all, so you have a mixed manage of what you have to be doing there. Um, so it actually makes that kind of interesting. Up next, we have Autobots. Sort and shuffle the 12 remaining Autobots into three face-down stacks separated by the act in the upper right corner. So there'll be some cards that will list, um, you know, like Act 1 there, for example, Perceptor. 
so that they're going to be separated by acts. Draw the top two cards from each stack, shuffle them into the main deck without looking at them. The other Autobots remain where they are. Um, so what this does is it creates a difficulty stack. So you have some Autobots will appear in Arc 1, some they'll be available in Arc 2, some they'll be available in Arc 3. Just more higher cost. Um, well, you start with two in the deck, and you have to kind of unlock the rest later on. So you don't just start the full gambit of Autobots. Um, we have a special Prime Trailer card, which we put next to the hangar. Um, Constructor Kong and Mini Cassettes place all Constructor Kongs below the main deck, and shuffle the Mini eight Cassettes in a face-down stack. So over here, we have um, three is our regular is our Autobot setup. So we have our three Autobots there, plus like our regular main deck cards. We have our um, regular main deck and leader cards there. Like normal, we have our hanger over here. We have Prime Trailer off to the side, our vamp in the hanger, like usual. So like all this other stuff over here is basically the same. But down here, we put the construct Constructicons and mini cassettes set aside to be used for later. Um, so then six, seven... Eight and nine are the last four we're going to look at. So six are complications. Separate all the new Act 1, 2, and 3 complications into three stacks. Shuffle these with random six random core game complications from each act to form the three complication stacks. Um, so you'll have one for you know each one, but you're adding the new ones into the old stuff. Uh, officers, add your five new Decepticon officers and one Cobra officer to the officer stack. Just so get shuffled in with the other ones. And follow the norm missions, normal story mode. Use only random mission one, act two. So you basically set up the same way just using these missions. And then the space bridge is a new token. Place it in the progression marks or off to the side out of play for now. So we're going to take a quick look at that as well. We will have this space bridge will pop up. Has some different icons on it. Has a blue, yellow, and red. Um, at the end of the round, advance the space bridge. Plus one, add one constructor con to the lineup. Um, when the marker advances to red, flip this tile. So as you move the little marker, which will be a little Decepticon symbol here, um, as it moves on the board, uh, when you land on these spots, you'll add different stuff, whether it's a con uh, Cobra Complication or a Constructicon. Um, and then when it does get eventually, you flip it over and it says, um, pay six of any skill to defeat this. If defeated, flip this over and place it back on the yellow. So then it only has halfway to go. At the end of each player's turn, destroy the top two face down cards in the main deck. End of round, add one constructor con to the lineup. So you're going to keep adding constructor cons out to make your game more difficult um, and while destroying cards. Um, and that's part of the main story. So that's that's uh, the big differences for setup. Um, we do have new rules and components. We have the Autobots. This expansion comes with 13 new Autobot skills. That are limited in the ways Joe's skills are not. With a unique ability to be sent on missions in either robot form, bot mode, or the transport form, or alt mode. Uh, you start getting the bomb will give you the opportunity to recruit new autobots throughout the game and expand your options. Um, and then we also have our Energon pool, which we'll look over that, how that works in just a minute. Um, autobots have a limited pool of Energon to use and roll in their skill checks. Their pool is located on the arc. Any dice not in the arc or not in the pool and should be kept separate. When making a skill choice, roll the dice based on the Agabot's skill. You must roll these pink Energon dice, not the green mission dice. No matter what skill that Agabot has, you can only roll dice from the available pool, which may be less than your Agabot's available skills. So if, like, it says I have, like, your wheel jack says we have two and two. If I only have one die, I can only roll one die. Um, so Energon... Roll the mission still considered in the pool until the mission is complete. Afterwards, remove them from the pool. Can only be re-added by other effects um, using the arc. So recruiting new Autobots gets one. Putting an Autobot you've already recruited into the arc, um, such as when you play it from your hand. When you do so, add one Energon uh, to the pool. Triggers even using effects from Repair Bay. At the end of each round, add one Energon up to max three for each Autobot. And some other cards just add them. So dice icons, so you have pink and green. Not all dice are rolled for Autobots or Energon modes. Alt mode, transport often low the use of mission dice. So whichever symbol is listed is the one you would use. Um, 
recruiting idle box. You recruit idle box from the lineup as you would any other card. Uh, or you can use the topmost base up idle box from the stack. So yeah, if they're in the lineup, you can already use them. Or if they're in the stack, you can keep gaining them that way. Um, these stacks have a new lava available for each act, but none of the face up during the first round of play. Access to the new lava should be granted with each new act, and when the first mission is put into play, in the second round, flip the auto box stack for act one. So if we flip back just for overall uh, layout here. So you have the auto box in stack one, two, and three. So when you're doing act one, you'll have access to the top deck. When you get to act two, you'll have the second one, and act three, you get the third one. So you don't get access to them all, and you're only going to get them in order. So every time you play, you're going to get a different order of cards. This is kind of a neat little mechanic there. Um, yeah, so basically there's a... So recruiting Autobot is a group item. So active player may initiate the purchase, but any players may help recruit them. Um, so very nice there. And then they just go on the bottom of your um, arc there. So now they're ready to be deployed. Um, so, Autobots on missions. Autobots in the arc or non-active players' hands can be sent to missions similar to Joe's. However, Joe still needs to be on every mission. Some cases, an Autobot may lead the mission when it grants the ability, as long well as one Joe joins them. Autobots have two modes to choose from. You can only use one on each mission. In bot mode, um, the selection of the card above the alt mode, this card has a recruit value, skills, ability, text, uh, user, energon, dice. Um, and then alt mode is you're going to use the bottom part of the card. Um, this is an Autobots transport. So it only has capacity to carry Joes along with the ability that is only active in this mode. When signing Autobots on a mission, first declare what mode they're in and then treat them accordingly. Um, so basically you can treat them as a bot and they work just like a regular Joe. Or you can treat them as an alt mode which now they work like one of the vehicles. So they get option of kind of both. They're just a little bit harder to get out. Um, that's the basic, basic thing there. Um, so it also says if you choose an autobot in a mission as an alt mode and you're using it as a transport, you can not use any other Joe transport. Take place as a vamp or any other transport you would have used. Um, so it makes sense there, right? Um, yeah, so we have something like this. If an autobot alt mode in your train types and has access to any ability listed regardless of the train. Unlike bot modes, you often roll mission dice. When a mission mode tuck, when on mission in this mode, tuck the Autobot under the Joe card to lead the mission, so only the transport section is visible. Just to help keep your reminder. Um, Autobots in hand. To start your turn, you may place any Autobots in your hand into the arc where they're now available for missions. If you redock the Autobot during a later mission or recruit phase, you immediately place them into the arc. Uh, when putting an Autobot in the arc, remember to add one Energon. Um, you do not hold on to it and play an Autobot from your hand just for its recruit value. So you have to get them, you put them right into the arc, and then you have to replay them. Um, so yeah, you also cannot take an Autobot out of the arc strictly for their recruit value. You must first send them on a mission by removing them back and placing them in your play area alongside your Joes. Interesting. All right. You know, we have the modules. We kind of talked about them, so I'm going to skip over them a bit. Uh, we have Constructing Cons are similar to Cobra Battalions, and they interact with the lineup one card at a time. They're placed in the row below the cards in the lineup from left to right, not from right to left, not left to right. They may be placed below a card that already has a Cobra Battalion, and vice versa. Um, cards in the lineup with Construction Cons cost plus two to recruit. Um... Defeat a construction con return to the bottom of their stack. There are ever six construction cons below the lineup. You immediately put Devastator into play. Then place every construction con in the lineup underneath Devastator, increasing the difficulty to defeat him. Um, mini cassettes are similar to complications. They represent side missions for players to deal with. They may face, up, they may face down a stack until a card tells you to draw them, and then return to the bottom of the stack. Very simple. Um... Now, the space bridge we kind of basically went over as well. It's fairly simple. You're just trying to, like, compete with it. Um, and then we have Prime's Trailer. It's a total asset you can send in any mission if you pay the cost. Cost, discard two Joes. If no Agabot transport is on this mission, discard one Joe. Um, if at least one Agabot, or, or discard one Joe if at least one Agabot is on the mission. Um, 
yeah, it's just an extra thing. Just to actually kind of use as an additional thing. So, if you're good with towable assets from Cold Snap, follow the Cold Snap rule for towables instead. But the Autobot transport still applies. Um, so, we have some new concepts here. We're just going to run through this. It's kind of taking a little bit long. But we need to go through this to understand what we're, what we're looking at with the cards. We have Peak. Some cards... Uh, like the Agobot problem for Sucker, I'll either peek that based on complications, look at without resolving it. Group items, as seen in Shadow of the Serpent expansion, um, lets you, everyone, uh, just to pay for the cost. It's fairly simple there. Um, so then we have crossover clarification. Cards that refer to Cobra officers also refer to Decepticon officers. And Agobot is not a go, even when on mission and in bot mode. But they satisfy the go requirement when playing cards with mission effects. Additionally, an auto buy on mission in alt mode is considered a transport for all purposes related to that keyword. Um, many cassettes and constructing cons of their own cards are also side missions. And the round effects are resolved when card effects are resolved. And some goes have the ally keyword. This is solely a thematic distinction and no bearing on gameplay unless specifically mentioned. Uh, now there's some solo stuff as well. Um, all right, so that's basically what we have for the rules. So, yeah, a lot of stuff I just threw at you. Um, but we kind of, again, we needed to go over some of it so you understand what the cards and the characters do. So we're going to start looking at our cards. Now, I have sweeped all my cards. I usually do my unboxings right when I get them. Um, but my previous video recordings, uh, I lost them, didn't work, whatever. Excuse I want to use in this video. But I'm, ha I'm having to re-record these. So they're all sleeved now. Um, so our first leader is we have CoverGirl, who has three of the vehicles. When CoverGirl is on a mission, the transport tank or land bonus is always active. Um, that's pretty cool. Uh, and then if we promote her, um, four for vehicles, three for explosions. When CoverGirl is on a mission, plus two wild steel and the transport land bonus is always active. And then we have Marissa Fairborn, uh, two for marksman, um, so she has the ally type up here as well. If Marissa defeats the final story mission, the, well, the threat meter is in yellow, minus one. If she uses Afterburner on a mission, plus one wild steel. Um, so this is kind of interesting because she, like, um, Cover Girl can basically be used in any game very well. Um, her, she's going to be a little bit more tricky because she only gains bonuses for final missions and using Afterburner, which you'll have to include. But it is just a regular transport, um, so it can be included in any deck as well. Um, and then we have her promoted version, uh, four marksmen, two martial arts. If she defeats any mission while well, the threat is in red, minus two. And if she uses Afterburner on any mission, plus two wild skill. Um... Before we jump to our Joes then, why don't we hop right into the vehicles? We'll look at Afterburner quick. So here's Afterburner. I love this because they're vehicle cards or transports, but they're also or, uh, transformers as well. Um, just carries one person, has the land, uh, plus two wild skills against side missions. If on land this mission succeeds, return Afterburner to the hangar. So at least what's nice about this is if you're playing with Ma Melissa, is it's going to keep going back and forth. If you use it on a land, it's still just going to be able to use it again. Uh, for a four cost, we have Warpath, who's a tank, uh, who can hold three people, plus two to marksman if on land, plus two to explosives. And then we have Sea Spray. Um, and so you guys will Autobot symbol there. Um, hold six people, uh, has the C skill, plus two to wild, See, Joe's on this mission cannot be removed by complications. Uh, so those are our three new regular transport. They didn't give us a ton because we have the regular transformers to use. Um, and then we have our towable asset, which is Prime's trailer. Um, so it costs two cards to use it. So it discard two, it's a land. So it's two marksmen or two vehicles. Reduce towable cost by one if an Agabot transport is on this mission. After the mission discard prime trailer you get plus one wild skill um yeah so total blast you're kind of just a neat little extra add-on to your characters all right let's look at our regular joes then our average joes no regular joes bazooka bazooka joe in fact 
um, three cost, four explosives, plus one wild steel when on a side mission. We have sci-fi who costs three, two tech, two marksman, plus one wild steel for each deer used on this mission. Dusky and Sandstorm, four cost, uh, two recon, two stealth. Use one utility in the lineup as though you played it, then immediately discard, then discard this card immediately. The utility remains in the lineup. Um, cool, so basically you're just, if you use it, you don't get to have his extra abilities. Alright, so so far those three are right there. They could be used in any game. Then we have Crankcase here. Four costs, four vehicles. If this mission succeeds, return the transport to the hangar or the Ark instead of discarding it. So it'll work for either one. Uh, Agent Helix, four costs, three marksmen, two martial arts. If Agent Helix is on a mission, you may draw one complication to gain plus three wild still. And then finally, we have Sergeant Savage. Five costs, he's also an ally, three explosives, and two marksmen. If Sergeant Savage is the only Joe on this mission, gain three explosives and three marksmen. That's pretty cool if he goes by himself. Um, yeah, so he's like the old school Joe. Um, all right, let's look at our brand new gear cards. So we have some new gears. We have Power Converter. Two costs. So, all right, so some of these are going to be more specific towards the Transformer deck um, and cards. But we have add one Energon to the Energon pool, then discard up to three cards. Add one additional Energon for each card you discard. The key cog device. Three costs. Uh, for a mission, target Agabot in this mission in bot mode may also use its alt mode ability. This does not prevent other transports from being used. So the key cog is what transforms them. Um, we have the Energon Drill for three costs. Add two Energon to the Energon Pool or add five and destroy this card. So how badly do you need this? Multiple times use it for two or one time just to get five. Uh, Doc who has four cost mission, add three tech, and plus one tracker. So I think some of these cards aren't specifically for the Transformer, so it can be used in other stuff as well. We have the Railgun, five cost, um, on mission, plus three marksmen, plus two explosives. And we have the Sonic Wave battery, six cost, plus on missions, plus three wild skill against group missions. Uh, it's very cool. A uh, bunch of neat extra cards we can use to our other decks. Our utilities. United Front. Um, two cost mission if both Autobots and Gills are on this mission. Plus two wild still. Roll out. Uh, three cost mission you may re-roll up to two dice for each Autobot on this mission. Team player. Three cost plus one wild still for each non-active Player who contributed to Joe to this mission. Um, that's very helpful as well. Um, field promotion for cost. Mission if no leaders are on this mission, your highest cost Joe has plus three wild still. We have recharge for cost. Add mission add two energon to the energon pool. And our last utility card is more than meets the eye. Um, Five cost mission. Autobox and mission have plus one wild skill for green dice and plus one wild skill for energon. So very cool. Get two extra dice. All right. So we're going to hop into the transformers themselves. Um, and so far, they're uh, like all the other cards. They're just going to have the regular Joe back. So nothing different there. Just to make sure we understand that. All right. So here is Bumblebee. All right, so Bumblebee starts in the arc, kind of works like the vamp of the Autobots. Um, so yes, plus two uh, recon. As you can see, like compared to a Joe, um, she has a pink little thing, so that way it just keeps track of that. I also like to have the different colors to kind of help separate them. Blue for uh, Joe. It would have been neat if it was more of a green color for transport versus red, um, but that's all right. Uh, for each mission, for each additional Autobot on this mission, plus one wild skill. 
In his alt mode, he can hulk the three three people has plus one wild skill for energon. Uh, may return to the arc, no energon gain. So if you use him in alt mode, you can always keep using him. Um, he'll at least always go back. So it gets you an opportunity to use that. Then we have our next one. So they're going to have the act up at top, and now they'll start having costs. Now all the level ones cost six. Um, so we have Perceptor, who has two tracker, two marksman, plus one wild skill, energon. When Perceptor is assigned to a mission, peek at one face down complication. Alt mode is zero, not a transport. He just discard one complication. Um, he's not a transport because he turns into, like, a microscope. And it doesn't make sense for people to ride a microscope in the battle. Um, but that's actually a neat little thing that they added into there. Um, our other one we have, like, that is a blaster. Three stealth, one recon. Plus one wild skill energon. If this mission is a mini cassette, plus two wild skill instead. Alt mode, not a transport. Plus one wild skill for a, uh, green guy. Uh, and he turns into a boombox. Um, and that's why he gains a bonus for fighting against mini cassettes. Uh, but yeah, it's actually cool. So two of the initial guys you get don't actually work as transports. But then again, there's six costs. They don't expect you to be able to buy these guys right off the bat. So you're going to have to use your regular Joe vehicles for a while until you can afford the transformers. But they're also group missions again. So everyone can join in to buy these. So it might be worth everyone spending a couple of points to get these early on. We have a Ratchet. Um, three tech, one explosive. You may turn one other Autobot on this mission to the Ark instead of discarding it. Because uh, he's an ambulance. Um, in alt mode, he can carry four guys. Has wild skill, two mission, two green guys. And then our last um, act one is we have Wheeljack. Uh, who's like the technician. Uh, so he has two tech, two vehicles. Pay two less to recruit to buy your next gear or utility this turn. Alt mode, he can carry three. Has wild skill plus two for green guys. In Act 2, we get up to 8 cost. We have Jazz. Um, 4 Recon, 2 Stealth. Plus 1 Wild Steel Energon for every 2 side every two side missions in play. In Alt Mode, he can carry 2 people, add 3 Energon to the Energon pool. So sometimes you'd be worth taking these guys just for their Alt Mode ability as well. Um, we have Prowl, who's our cop car. Um, tracker, three tracker, three tech. Prowl can start a mission if he does peek at the complications for this mission. In alt mode, he has three, uh, plus two vehicles and plus one wild skill. So, you know, he also has the leader ability up top. Um, which I don't believe anybody else did. I'm correct. It was just Idlebot, Idlebot, Idlebot. Yep. So he's also a leader. Um, you could trigger other leader effects as well. And then we have RC, which is our motorcycle. Uh, three marksmen, two martial arts, plus two wild steel energon. In alt mode, two two riders, and plus two hits. And our last act two is we have Cup, who's a jeep. Um, two marksmen, four explosive. If Cup is on a story mission, discard one complication. Alt mode, he can carry four people, plus three wild steel. Um, wild steel for the green guys. Alright, Act 3, now they're costing up to 10, we have Ironhide, our SUV. Um, plus 4 explosives and 3 for vehicles. If this mission succeeds, you may discard 1 card to defeat a side mission. Alt mode, he can carry 5, uh, 2 wild steals for green, plus 1 hit. Wingblade, who's our jet. Um, 2 tech, sorry, 4 tech and 3 martial arts. If this mission has 2, comp two plus complications... Add plus two wild skill for energon. Alt mode, she can only hold one, but she does three hits. We have Hot Rod, who's also a leader. Four vehicle, three marksman. Hot Rod can start any mission. If he's the only leader, plus three wild skill. Um, alt mode, he holds two. Four wild skill um, against officers. And then finally, we have the big dog, Optimus Prime. Um, who cost 12. He has 4 martial arts, 4 marksmen. Optimus Prime can start a mission, plus 2 wild skill for each other officer in play. Um, alt mode, he holds 4 wild skill. 
uh, green and plus one hit. Um, yeah, so that's really cool. We're gonna get all the different, um, all the different transformers. And what's really neat is I, if they made more expansions for this, um, we could definitely get more Autobots. So this would be kind of a cool thing if they came back to after a while. I wouldn't want them to do it too soon, um, but it would be neat if they came back and added some more different ones, or maybe an added like an alt mode where you can somehow play as Decepticon, something like that. But there could be some neat, there's so many different Transformer characters they could definitely add. Um, that's really cool. All right, we're gonna look at our complications, um, which will have our regular red and black complication back. Now they are purple, in this one, but that's just to kind of show that they're from the Decepticon uh, color set. I try that little Decepticon symbol, but they work like any other complication. So we have, and you have the act at the bottom. Energon heist, remove three Energon from the Energon pool. Operation surveillance uh, with the Baroness and Ravage. Uh, draw one mini cassette, then remove this complication from the game. Double trouble. Uh, story mission, reroll all double hit dice results in your initial roll. Maximum effort. Add two Constructicons to the lineup. When we get to Act 2, we have Now or Never. Space Bridge plus one if it is already complete, advance one. As you command. Um, let's say Megatron, uh, Dr. Mindbender, and... Cobra Commander in Destro's Reflection. Um, this is that. Nope, that's not Megatron. That is Soundwave. Uh, right, put Soundwave into play, then remove this card from the game. I just read the words, right? Uh, Swarm Attack. Each player must discard one card with a mission effect if able. This complication cannot be targeted with mission effects. Those are the Insecticons. And then we have Operation Destruction. Uh, Soundwave summoning, summoning Frenzy there. Um, draw a mini cassette and Space Bridge plus one, then remove this complication from the game. Our Act 3, we have the Abandon the Ark story mission. If this mission fails, discard all Agabots from the Ark and advance one. Power Drain, remove one Energon from the Energon pool for each player in the game. And then, oop, finally... Ooh, I ran out of space on there. We have Operation Warfare. Um, all the different cassettes. Um, so we have Operation Warfare. We have Draw a Mini Cassette, add one Cobra Battalion to the lineup, plus in advance, plus one. All right, so we are going to look at our Constructicons and our... Uh, mini cassettes next. So here's our Constructicon. So I just have them sleeved in purple sleeves. Um, but if you don't, on the back of them, they're going to have the symbol, if you have clear sleeves, they have the symbol that matches what they are. So the Constructicons have like a little bridge and the mini cassettes will have a little cassette on the back. Um, so yeah, you could, like if you're sleeving these, you could obviously do clear sleeves. You could tell these two decks apart. Um, I just have them saved in purple, just because I thought it worked just as well. They're the only really purpley cards in the set. Um, and it's easy enough to tell them apart by looking at the front of them. Again, if they start adding a bunch of these, and you have a bunch of different other types, and it might be worth it. Um, but here we have Scrapper, Side, mi side Mission, and Constructicon. Two for any skill, uh, which I think is common amongst all of them, uh, because they're kind of like lower level characters. This construction card, the card above this construction card costs plus two to recruit. If all construction cards have been placed, put Devastator into play. And I think they all have the exact same effect. So we have Long Haul, Bone Crusher, Mixmaster, and Hook. Um, so I'm gonna jump in to our officers. Um, and they're gonna have the Obey Cobra on the back. I just have them sweeped in black. But there is our Deceptic De Devastator, Decepticon Officer Group Mission. He has nine for vehicles and explosives. Uh, when put into play and at the start of your turn, place all Constructicons in the lineup under Devastator. 
Story mission plus one difficulty for each Constructicon under if defeated, discard all Constructicons. So basically, if they all assemble, you have to deal with this big giant threat instead of these small ones. Um, and you defeat them, they'll go back and they, the whole thing can recycle. Um, which is always a fun thing to do. Um, oh, I missed one. We also had Stavanger. He got mixed in with the rest of the constructor, or the cassettes. All right, so we have our mini cassettes. They are side missions, precision strikes, and uh, mini cassettes. The other guys were uh, just side missions. These are also precision strikes. Um, so they kind of target one character. We have Ravage here, who has two for any skill, which I think is that common between all of them. Um, at the end of your turn, advance two, if playing solo, advance one instead. Laser Beak, attach this card to the arc. You cannot use Repair Bay or Teletran 1 or add energy to the pool at the end of the round. Rumble, attach this card to the hangar. At the end of each round, destroy one non vamp. Transport at the hangar. Frenzy, at the start of your turn, discard one random card. Rat Bat, at the start of your turn, move one energy from the energy pool. Buzzsaw, attach this card to the space bridge, discard if not in play. When Constructor Con is added to the lineup, advance one. Oop, uh, wing thing. Your GIs on missions do not use wild skills. And then finally we have Overkill. Um, uh, put this card face up next to the main deck. When a new card is added to the lineup, draw one complication. Yes, these guys are basically, the constructor cons are gonna like make your cards harder to buy. The mini cassettes are going to make everything else a pain until you deal with them. Um, but yeah, it's gonna draw your attention away from the main villains and the missions and everything. All right, then we have, of course, we have some more officers. We have uh, Hit Megatron Hiss Tank. He actually gets an alt form of becoming the Hiss Tank instead of just his regular tank. Eight costs, explosives, and martial arts. Story mission, plus four difficulty at the end of each round, plus two uh, advance. If defeated, put the Baroness into play. This is a crazy, right? You defeat him, you still have to fight the Baroness. We have Shockwave, who has six skeleton intact. At the end of each round, add one face down complication to the story mission. Then discard the highest card cost from the lineup. Um, Star Scream. Plus six for any skill. Story mission plus three difficulty. At the end of each round, plus one. If defeated, put Old Snake into play. Uh, we haven't seen Old Snake yet. He's coming up. We have Soundwave. When Soundwave is put into play, draw one mini cassette. At the end of each round, draw one mini cassette. He has five tracker or recon. And then finally, we have a regular Cobra Trooper. We have Old Snake, which we don't know who this mysterious Old Snake is. Um, Hint, it's Cobra Commander. Five martial arts are recon. Mission abilities cannot be activated. Um, so that's really fun. We get some more different characters to play and they do different stuff. All right, so then we want to look through our actual mission cards. Um, so again, mission seven. Um, and I'm not going to read every line of these. We just like to read the titles. You can see what we have in here. Um, but we have Investigate the Mysterious Desert Operation. Um, should have some of these Angle V Crown, add one face down complication, and one constructor kind. So they're going to have, you know, you see where they're going to mix, definitely mix them with having to use the new stuff. Uh, good Hunting, draw mini cassettes. Warn the Planet. Secret Meetup. Sabotage the Floating Factory, and then the mission finale for Act 1 is Secure the Secret Energon Mine. For Act 2, we have Kill the Messenger, uh, Locate the Secret Lab, Robots in Disguise. Decepticons are hiding in plain sight, and you mean it could be anywhere, anything. Even the vamp is a potential death trap. Um, that's fun. Um, destroy the matter conversion device. 
to be or not to be. Um, so suspect that Bumblebee has been reprogrammed. If they can't even scrabble the circuits, there's no telling what damage he may cause. I love those. The plot of these missions are really fun. Um, Wrench in the Gears is our final um, finale for this one. Then our Act 3, we have Death from Above. Starscream. Um, Joes are under attack, and all too familiar foes in the cockpit. Cobra! <coughs> that's, oh, that's awesome. Um, a forced alliance uh, rescue attempt. Slow your roll. The S-N-A-K-E assault, the snake assault. And then finally we have Destroy the Space Bridge. Um, yeah, so some fun really about stuff. You see there's lots of stuff doing with the Space Bridge and the Constructicons, cassettes, um, all the different elements of the game. Uh, so very cool. All right, yeah, so this is very neat. It has some really interesting, lots of regular main deck cards you can add in anything. The Joes, or the, the Transformers, like you have to use the Ark um, and use the Joe or the Transformers together. Um, but potentially they could be added to any other mission after that, um, uh, you know, and be used either direction. Um, and then some, again, some of the complications and the other, the commanding office and that stuff, um, can be probably added into other stuff, but maybe not as much. They really need to do is, um, this deck building game, they have a lot of these unique missions that kind of play, each deck kind of plays by themselves. Is they need a better way to like mix and match them all. Like, you can just throw some of these guys in here, but there's lots of cards that hear those specifically. Pull them cards out so you have to use them. Um, I love like just an update, like updates for set one through five or whatever, or one through seven at this point. It's missions, but it's probably like set five. Um, and just have cards that would be like, okay, swap out this card, this card, and this card for these versions that will let you use other characters from other sets and mix and match. So, like, I can be playing, like, one of the base game missions and maybe Old Snake will appear, or I can be using, um, playing one of these missions and, uh, Storm Shadow will appear. Um, could be some very interesting stuff there. Um, me just spitballing. Alright, so the last thing I want to show off in this one is we have the New Alliance bonus box. So, if you're not familiar, um, Renegade Studios, Renegade Games, um, every time you pre-order one of their games, you get usually a bonus um, that works with the game. Sometimes they're extra cards, sometimes they're foil cards, sometimes they're different components. Every game varies. Um, but if you keep buying these all the time, I would highly recommend pre-ordering so you get these bonuses. If you didn't, obviously this game has already been released and you couldn't pre-order it now. You can always purchase these later on in the store. I don't know how long they'll be around, but they are current they're usually available for a decent amount of time afterwards. They're about about five dollars a piece. Uh but you get some bonus thing for it. The GI Go deck building games have always been higher uh, extra components or like 3D versions of something that came in. Like the first I had the hanger, we got like a 3D hanger. Um, and then we usually get a couple of bonus cards. So in this one, we are going to get the um, double layered uh, arc here. So what this does is it just takes our regular arc board and gives it a second layer. So this is one of the ones where in, in itself, it's hit or miss because it doesn't really affect the gameplay at all. But being it's flat, and now that it has little spots in there, um, it gives you little spots to kind of slide your card in there, kind of hold it on there. Um, that's not that much. It's more kind of for, like, the dice. Because now the dice can kind of sit in here versus just sitting on top of it. Um, but again, it's not... They're not that deep or, like, they're not, you know not going to roll out or anything um it doesn't add or take away any gameplay elements um it's basically the same size you know so it doesn't change anything there they just added that extra layer in there um yeah so it's cool it's neat if you like you're gonna buy it anyhow it may as well get this extra bonus um 
So this this in itself is stippable if you don't really need it. The thing you may want to pick it up for are the bonus cards. Um, there's only two of them, but they're pretty cool. So we have two promo cards. We have Dinobot Rampage, which again could be leading to a potential sequel, right? Now you can add Dinobots into the game. Uh, utility. Uh, mission plus two wild skill. Any player may discard any number of Joes from their hand for each they do plus one wild skill. And then we get a new Transformer. We get Grimlock for Act 3, which is a level 10 cost. Um, four explosives. Grimlock can start a mission. Plus two wild skill for Energon. Plus two hits against Devastator. In alt mode, he can only carry one person, but he has two wild skills and two hits. So it's really cool. We get uh, a Grimlock version here. So again, now they could easily add another crossover with this if they did at some point where you get a play as the Dinobots. Um, you could add some of the Predacons or the Insecticons in there a little bit more. There's plenty of different options. Um, but that's what we have for this video. A little bit longer because I had to go through all these new rules, but we have a new alliance for the deck building game. If you really love Transformers and you love crossovers, they also have a crossover with the My Little Ponies deck building game. You can check out the video. Um, I've done one of those too. Um, hopefully it'll be posted around the same time I post this. Um, also, I'm hoping that they have the um, Transformer deck building game. I'm hoping at some point they add G.I. Joes to that in the reverse direction. That would be really cool as well to see how they do that. Um, but that game has a very different mechanic, um, where you, like, search around the board, the Matrix. So how they would add G.I. Joe's into that, I'm not sure, but it would be a neat idea. Um, alright, that's what we got. Check out the other videos. See you guys later. Bye!